everybody all I know this is not a 1965 Cadillac or a classic car or anything like that but sometimes you got to help a friend out this is a friend of mine's car it's a 2007 Chevy Suburban and it needs a front bumper repair it got uh, t-boned and uh, not too bad of course uh, the damage was not on the Suburban side it was that of the uh, Hyundai or the small car that hit it so it uh, messed this front bumper up pretty good and then uh, left a bunch of drag scratch marks down the side or uh, the driver's side of the Suburban that we'll be taking care of in the uh, next couple episodes here. Uh, I think I got a better view of that front bumper coming your way. There we go. There's the dent, the scratches. Um, there's a tear in it down below. Uh, we'll be able to see that uh, soon when we get it off. Um, without further ado, let's jump into this. We'll get the... Uh, Front bumper removed, and then I'll uh, jump back in later. How about we speed this up? I've been walking all night, hoping that I'd find you. I've been walking all night. Good thing about plastic cars is how easy it is to remove the front end crazy easy um, four bolts across the top two underneath the bumper and then uh, two into the uh, fender well and then unhook those little floodlights at the bottom and you're done voila let's get it up on the stand here Okay, time to hit this thing with a DA sander. I'll take a moment and say, uh, take your time when you're getting the grill pieces out and things like that. It is brittle and um, it's fairly common sense. If you look at it, you'll see where everything clips in and everything uh, for the most part um, clipped out of this thing um, just by pressing on the tabs and things like that. Um, the one issue I did run into where you saw me get the body saw out there real quickly was uh, they have these plastic screws that are holding in that uh, kind of support styrofoam stuff. And uh, they'd been mashed in there when this thing had gotten impacted. So I needed that to get those out of the way. Other than that, pretty simple job. Let me speed this back up and uh, we'll get to DA. This is 180 grit uh, sandpaper on the DA right here. And then I'll bust out some uh, 80 grit here in the near future just to really knock down uh, some of the body filler and cracks and uh, scratches that I found. Well, what do you know? There's body filler on the passenger side of this bumper. I alluded to it earlier. This bumper had obviously uh, been through some issues in the in the past and had some filler done, and it kind of reared its ugly head by cracking and shattering on this side, uh, even though it was impacted on the driver's side of the car. But we'll fix that. Sit tight. Let's play some music, and uh, we'll speed her back up. <laughs> Yeah. 
sky so big. Here's that driver's side that I had to uh, push that big dent out of uh, that you saw in the beginning. Um, like I said, heat gun, um, warm it up and then push it out. Um, I used a rubber handle of a uh, screwdriver to do that. Um, I got it a little bit too warm in some places where we got a little melty action going on there. So I'm hitting it with some 80 grit right now just to take that down and uh, get it ready for some filler. This is my mini DA. Uh, it accepts a three inch pad and a two inch pad. Uh, Astro Pneumatics makes it. Uh, it's in some of my other videos and I love this thing. So we got uh, 180 grit paper on there and we're going to kind of get into these tougher spots. I don't know what to do. Girl sells concepts, I lean out in the doorstep And inhale your the scene up and down the street If the country rocker ain't got no stories He's gonna have to drive a taxi We've used the DA for everything we can. I have a uh, uh, red scotch right now and we're getting into some of the uh, tighter locations and I've got the um, abrasive soap for uh, spraying cleaning plastic on there made by Bulldog. I, I know a lot of people use the uh, SEM soap or SEM soap. Uh, it's all the same to me and it works pretty good. If this job hunter ain't got no 40s He's gonna pound it from a paper bag And the spaceship and that I mean is coming in the land There's a two inch rip on this side of the bumper that we needed to repair. I'm cleaning it with the body saw. I'll come back with the angle grinder and then we'll drill uh, several holes on either side of the rip to make sure that the epoxy that goes on there has something to grip through to and through to the front side. You can also see that I drilled a quarter inch hole at the bottom of that rip to make sure that that did not continue down the bumper. That's pretty much uh, standard protocol. So let me speed it back up and I'll cut back in when we get to epoxy. Same issue up here by uh, the grill portion of the bumper. Rough it up, drill it out, and uh, get it ready for epoxy. Sorry guys, I'm going to bust out shaky cam here and uh, show you what uh, what I did there. Holes on either side, holes at the end, uh, there's the, the uh, crack or rip. Run around to the other side, there's the inside prepped. And a quick shot of the outside. And we'll move on. The product we're going to use is Evercoat Maxim Multifix for plastics, plastic bumpers and Anything you can think of, I guess, that's flexible. Um, 
It uh, is sandable, spreads easy. The one thing that I will say is it is uh, not fun to push through a regular caulk gun. You need one of those uh, high ratio 26 to 1 guns. Uh, you can get them from Amazon and some places like that. So if you're going to use this stuff, I suggest you pick some of that up. It is a two part and it mixes uh, in the nozzle. So you're pushing uh, kind of two cartridges inside a caulking tube which is a little misleading when you're buying it um, exactly how hard you're going to have to squeeze. I'm not exactly a wimpy man, but this thing totally kicked my ass. So I put a base layer down, uh, pushed it through the holes, uh, cussed a whole lot, and then I'm going to lay in this uh, fiberglass mesh. They sell a fancy uh, grid pattern backing that you can use too, but uh, fiberglass mesh works fine. Lay that in, uh, push it down into the uh, base layer, and then we'll add some more over the top of that. If you keep a close eye, you'll see me go through three different caulk guns trying to find one that could actually squeeze this out. And uh, through the uh, magic of video production, I cut all that crap out like when I ran to Home Depot, came back and continued. So do yourself a favor. If you're going to use this stuff, and I would say that this product is quite amazing get yourself a proper caulk gun a high ratio heavy duty and you're not going to find it at home depot point out that you do the outside of the crack as well once you've got the insides done I, I did that on the uh, the side the one on the side and now we're going to do that one up by the grill um, you need to force it in to get it in through those uh, stitching holes there and then uh, right here just kind of smoothed it to go a decent angle or a decent curve I should say um, to fit inside here and we'll go back and sand it the stuff sands great too it's a pretty remarkable product Ladies and gentlemen, here is um, the spreading of a flexible glaze. It is made by Evercoat. It's called Polyflex. It's a flexible polyester glazing putty. It doesn't pinhole. It remains flexible. It works really good on these plastic bumpers. I've got another one running around town that's uh, probably a year old and the repair um, still looks like brand new. So I'm going to say these work really good. My buddy Rusty back there asking me what the hell this multi-fix stuff is I'm using. And uh, him and I are going to head out for another car adventure here. And uh, stay tuned for part two. I'll do more of this uh, flexible glaze, get under the sanding, and get her into base and back on the Suburban. Thanks for all the subscriptions and the comments and the likes, guys. With that said, I'll say peace and grease, sucker. <laughs>